pray. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Um, I wanted to, um, first of all, tell you that we're really excited today because we have found a building. And so, uh, amen, amen. And so, um, it's large enough that uh, when we finish <clears throat> doing the build out, it will be first class and it will allow us to do everything we want to do. It'll be something that we're very proud of. And, um, I was hoping to be able to give you more detail uh, today. We will next week. We are in the final stages of negotiating the contract. And so, isn't God faithful? Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so, <clears throat> uh, we're not going to be homeless pretty soon. Um, and uh, this, as God leads us, will you know, be able to be something that we don't have to pray about anymore. But um, we will be able to say, look what the Lord has done. And uh, so God is, <clears throat> uh, I can't tell you what it is a relief for me personally <laughs> to, to know that, that God is, is answering our prayers. Uh, I also want to say that this is an amazing church. Uh, if you know anything about me, there is nothing that I put more priority on than prayer. Because I know for a fact that nothing advances the kingdom of God like prayer. And I also know this, there is nothing that puts terror in the hearts of demons like prayer. And this is a praying church. Um, when I look at our evenings uh, during the week to see how many of you are coming out and you're praying and you're interceding. It just lets me know that God is up to something. And so I want you to continue to pray with us about the building that there won't be any hiccups that the enemy cannot interfere in any way. And we're just going <clears> to <throat> be excited about what the Lord is doing. All right. If you have your Bibles, um, or your phones, or if you're a genius, you have the Bible memorized. <clears throat> um, I want to talk to you about seed. And we're going to the very first chapter of Genesis. In verse 11, <clears throat> And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and the herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. It's the old <clears throat> question is, which came first, the chicken or the egg? The chicken. But it had the ability in it to reproduce. Everything that God makes he makes it with the ability inside of it to reproduce itself. Seed declares the future. Everything that is in, that we see in our lives and everything that we're going to realize in the future is already in the seed. And when God began to create, he didn't just want a tree that would last for a period of time. 
He didn't want the earth just to be green for a period of time. So though he made the trees and he made the herbs and he made the grass and all of the animals, he made all of them, he put within them seed. Because seed would protect the future. It had inside of it, hallelujah, everything to create. So when God begins to do this and, and when he's looking at everything and he says it's good, he says it's good because he realizes that this will continue to replicate. This will continue on. And then when God got to man, Adam was seed. God created Adam. He was seed. And when God looked at him, hallelujah, though Adam had not yet brought forth anything, there was already in him the prophetic ability to reproduce himself. Anything that does not reproduce itself is not natural. And I want to touch on a couple of things a little later on in the message. And then the Bible says that God put Adam in his sleep and he took from him part of a rib and he creates the help meet and he creates Eve. And Adam and Eve begin to have fellowship with God. They're in the midst, hallelujah, of this incredible setting where they don't even understand everything that's going to happen. Until one day the Bible declares that Eve is seduced by the serpent into violating the word of the Lord. And when she eats of the fruit... Not only did she eat of the fruit, she eats of the seed. And when she did that, there was another nature that began to come forth. And everything that would come out of her womb from that moment on came out of a seed that God never intended to be. You don't realize it, but the scripture says, I think it's the parable of the tares and the wheat. The Bible says the good seed are the children of the kingdom or the children of God. It also says this, though, the bad seed are the children of the devil. Not everybody's going to be saved. There is this crazy doctrine, and Pastor Harry touched on it, that eventually, you know, everybody's going to be saved, including the devil. I got news for you. That's not going to happen. Straight is the gate and narrows the way, and few there be that find it. You just don't waltz into heaven. It is a deliberate, intentional act to get yourself into heaven. The moment she ate of that... God begins to speak prophetically. And we find in the book of Genesis chapter 3. Verse 14, the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all the cattle, above every beast of the field. He's speaking to the servant Upon thy belly shalt thou go, thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. I will put enmity or hatred between thee and the woman. This thing that's gotten in the church, that the church should be friends with the world, is out of the belly of hell. The church can never be friends with the world. We're not like them. We come from a different DNA. God put hatred between righteousness and sin. He put hatred between the church and the devil. 
And the Lord looks at the enemy and he begins to declare a prophetic word. He says, I will put hatred between thee and the woman <clears throat> and between thy seed <clears throat> and her seed. It shall bruise or break thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. The hour that we are in right now is the enemy sees prophetically a harvest that's getting ready to come forth out of the church. But the only way there can be a harvest is if the seed somehow is able to release the potential that's in it to cause the glory of God to be released in the earth. You don't think seed is powerful? When you go back and you begin to read the scriptures, I, I think it's to Abraham the Lord speaks this. He said, in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. In thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Genesis 22 and 17, thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Every time you see a seed, you see something prophetic that is declaring, it's not what I'm going to be. This is just the outward appearance, but inside of the seed, hallelujah, if there is a touch of the Spirit of God, something begins to be released by the power of the Lord. No wonder hell's after our children. There was a deliberate plan in this nation to begin to come after the seed that would be the harvest of this generation. It happened in the 60s with Madeline O'Hare when she rose up to have prayer taken out of the schools. She realized, I can't make this generation stop praying because they came out of brush arbors and the latter rain. But if I can get their children, hallelujah, separated from the power of prayer, I can raise a generation that didn't talk like their grandparents or their parents. And now you have a generation of children grown up in this nation Everything in seed is about life. There are two major strongholds that are at work in the earth right now that are greater strongholds than anything else in the nations. Both of them are about seed. There is a power. No wonder God's trying to release an anointing in this hour. Can I tell you, there's enough of power of God in this building to set everybody free by the power of the Holy Ghost. We do not back down. I will not be quiet. I will not stand down for the sake of some kind of detente. God raised the church up to rescue them out of hell by the power of the Lord. The other one is abortion. It is to kill the seed. No wonder the enemy is going after the seed of a generation. It's because he understands if that seed ever germinates, if a baby, hallelujah, ever comes forth, then it has the divine potential to pull down the strongholds of hell. It's, it's kind of, and I'm going to pick up on this Wednesday night in my teaching, but... Um, when God begins to speak prophetically, he never said the seed of man will bruise your head. 
He said, the seed of the woman will bruise your head. The church. Hallelujah. That's why there's such an attack on the church in this hour. The other issue that stops seed from being produced is a eunuch. What's happened to the church in America is she has become sterile. I got another name for seeker-friendly churches. They're sterile churches because there's nothing reproduced. The altar, hallelujah, is a midwife section where when you get people in the altar, what's in the womb begins to come forth by the Spirit of God. And there is a travail. When Zion travails, she shall bring forth children. You cannot make a church sterile and not have revival. So God understands the power of seed. You begin to follow it down through the scriptures. And every time there's deliverers that are going to be birthed, the enemy goes after the seed. It happened with Moses. There is a death warrant that is issued from Pharaoh's house. Kill the seed. Midwives said, they're born, they're too lively. We can't kill them because they're already born. Can I tell you that God has protected the seed of revival and harvest in the United States of America by the power of the Lord. I see an explosion, says the Lord, that the seed is getting ready to break out of its husk and out of its shell. And even this year, saith the Lord, there is a release of the glory of God. And what is like dormant is getting ready to come forth by the power of the Lord. There is inherent inside of your spirit the ability, hallelujah, to come forth by the Spirit of God. Say, Pastor, why do we go through so much hell? Because the enemy is trying to kill the seed of God that's in you. Doesn't want the posterity of God to come forth out of you. God always uses. He will always protect seed. Say, but it's been so long. It is documented that a seed can be in the ground or just stored for hundreds of years. They, they have a documentation of one seed that was 2,000 years old but it had been kept in a dry, cool place. And when they planted it, it brought forth fruit. Does not matter, hallelujah, that the church has not yet brought forth fruit. You know what you see in the building right now? This is seed. This ain't harvest. But there's something getting ready to be released by the power of the Lord. The enemy will always try to kill seed. One of these ways that he's tried to do it with the church, if you go back and you read the parable of the tares and the wheat, is the Bible said he will try to counterfeit what the seed is. And when they asked Jesus about the parable, he said, an enemy has sowed tares in a field where the seed of wheat was. The devil does not have his own field. He can't make things grow. So the Bible said he took a counterfeit seed and he planted it when the seed of God was planted. And what he, the way he tried to kill it was to use the virtue and the nutrients that the, that the wheat needed in order to grow. It was using it for itself. 
Whenever you lose the virtue of God in a house because there's a counterfeit move that's taking that virtue, you deny the DNA possibilities of the power of the Lord. This is why there's such an onslaught right now against the church. It's because hell sees that there is harvest coming forth by the power of God. And whenever the enemy plants mixture, and that's been the biggest problem with the church, is we have so much mixture in the house of God that is not the Lord. It looks like wheat, sounds like wheat, but when you get right down to it, it ain't wheat. And the Lord said, I'm going to loose angels in the earth right before harvest, and they're going to remove the tares from the house of the Lord. They're going to bind them in bundles and burn them, and then they're going to lose, hallelujah, the DNA of God in the atmosphere by the power of the Lord. There are so many of you right now that are on the verge of God breaking you out of who you are. Hallelujah. You can feel it inside of you. I went for years. I knew that this was in me, but I couldn't release it. Then one day it just began to come forth. See, the Bible says that man can water and he can plant, but only God can make the seed grow. Only God can give the increase. So now you have in the atmosphere there is this seed of the harvest that's getting ready to be released in the earth. And the enemy senses it. Now, when you go back to the scriptures and you begin to read, the Bible begins to talk about when he's referring to the seed of the woman, he's referring to Christ. And all through the scriptures, you will find that it talks about that Christ is seed. He's the seed of Abraham. He's called the seed of David. And down through the ages, God had already created a seed that he declared existed in Genesis. The man wasn't there, the fruit wasn't there, but the seed was there. And the moment, see, Adam was seed and he failed. And the moment that long before he failed, God had already created a seed in the spirit realm because Jesus said before Abraham was, I am. And so he existed. So here comes Jesus. The Bible says that he is planted. In Mary. God takes this incredible divine seed called Jesus that down through the centuries of time he has been protecting the seed of Christ. And that it doesn't matter how bad it looked, some man, hallelujah, would birth a bloodline that would keep the seed of Christ alive. You don't think the enemy is afraid of Christ? When you go back to the Old Testament, the Scripture says that God looks down in Noah's generation, and he says, I repented that I've made man because everything about them is evil. But when you go into the depths of study, you're going to find out the Bible says that demonic beings came down and had intercourse with natural women, and they begin to produce a hybrid human. And the Scripture calls them giants or rephleums or, or uh, uh, nephleums, different names for them, but they were giants. That's who Goliath was. It came out of an unholy alliance. The bloodline was mixed with a natural human and a demonic being. God looks down and says, I will not have that on the earth. <clears throat> 
Why did that happen? Because the devil believed that if he could pervert the bloodline of humanity, then he could stop the seed of David from ever being brought forth by the power of God. And so God looks down, and the Bible says he sends a flood. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord because, as Scripture says, he was perfect before the Lord. The word perfect there is referring to blood sacrifices that were of pure blood without spot, ring, or blemish, or wrinkle. And so the Lord takes Noah and his wife and his three sons and their three wives, eight of them, puts them on an ark, preserves the bloodline that had not been tainted by fallen angels. And when Noah comes out of that ark, there is a pure bloodline again on the earth. And again, he has protected the DNA or the seed of David because Christ has to come on the scene. Now, several thousand years later, there is again an attack to come against the divine seed of Jesus. Herod tries to kill him. And on through the ages it happens. And when this seed begins to grow in Mary and Jesus is born, when he's 33 and a half years old, the Bible says, and oh, the devil should have figured this out. He says, I'm going to kill him, and I'm going to stop the prophetic work. What he didn't realize was when he killed him, he planted the seed. Jesus was not buried. The devil planted him. And when the seed, hallelujah, if you don't want seed to produce, keep it out of the ground. How stupid is the devil that the very thing he doesn't want to do, he does it. They took the seed, hallelujah, that Genesis says is going to break your head. And while hell is celebrating and they buried the seed, the moment they took the seed of Abraham and the seed of David and put him in the ground, all of a sudden something began to take place. And the prophetic word of 4,000 years ago uh, begins to come forth by the power of God. Hear me, it doesn't matter who is in politics. It doesn't matter how bad it looks in the earth. It doesn't matter how many demons are loose. There is a prophetic seed uh, that is in the ground uh, by the power of the Lord. Uh, you can't stop it. You can't kill it. Uh, you can't delay it. Uh, and you can't deny it. Uh, there is a seed uh, all the children of the Most High that's going to come up out of the soil. That's what happened to this church. The devil should have left resting place alone with its hundred people because when he killed it, God planted it. And a few months later, there was resurrection in the very place that there had been death. Nobody can explain it. One man can water and one man can plant, but only God can give the increase. What you're looking at right now is increase, but it's not harvest. You might as well get ready. There's going to come a day that if we want to have church in the Titan Stadium, we'll have church in the Titan Stadium. We're going to have church in the Bridgestone Arena. Hallelujah. We're going to fill it up by the power of the Holy Ghost. Something happens when I call your name. There is a release, hallelujah, of the power of God. Now, I want to declare to you uh, that many of you, uh, what you thought you were buried, uh, God said, no, you were planted, uh, and there is a resurrection anointing uh, getting ready to be released by the power of God. You cannot kill God's seed. Hallelujah. 
What God ordains, you cannot kill it. You cannot kill the church in the United States of America. The enemy has tried to do it for years. They drove her underground. They persecuted her. They ran her through the dark ages. They put her in the lion's den in Rome. But 2,000 years later, the church is alive and well. Why? Because we have the DNA of Almighty God in our spirits. It's very interesting that when God starts off with humanity, he does it in a garden. When he's resurrected and Mary sees him, you know who she thought he was? The gardener. He was. I'm sure that when Jesus came up out of the grave, see, what went in was not what came out. One seed went into the ground, but on resurrection, there is something being released. Fifty days later, after the seed has been planted, there is something that begins to come up out of the earth. What is it? It is the church on the day of Pentecost. It's not one seed, but it is 3,000 seeds. Now, for you and I, there is a divine protection over us. Before you get saved, <clears throat> you are the seed of the enemy. You have his nature. I know it sounds mean, but Jesus told me, he said, your father's the devil. Before you get saved, you are the children of a fallen kingdom. You are ruled by the devil. Both, all of us, his nature was ours. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things pass away. All things become new. So now, when you come to Jesus Christ and you repent, you are now in the process of death, burial, and resurrection. The moment that you repent, what happens? God takes the seed of Christ, puts it inside of you, and now you are the first fruits of a resurrection seed by the power of the Holy Ghost. And when you are born again, the Bible says we are born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed by the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. You don't realize it, but you have the same potential in you right now that Jesus had. There is nothing that Jesus did that you and I cannot do. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, greater works, the works that I do shall ye do also, but greater works works in these uh, shall ye do. Uh, there is a breaking forth uh, of the seed of God in the atmosphere right now in 2023. Uh, this is the year saith the Lord uh, of resurrection. Uh, this is the year saith the Lord uh, of resurrection. Uh, what the devil took and buried, uh, God said, uh, there is a resurrection uh, getting ready to be released uh, in the atmosphere. Uh, all things pass away. All things become new. You are changed. The DNA of God is released in your spirit. Yeah. 
Revelations chapter 12 says this, that we are entering into a stage where the devil has come down to make war with the remnant of the sea. What we are seeing should not surprise us. The enemy is never going to give in. The world will be in chaos when you and I leave in the rapture. The only thing that God is interested in right now for the next few years is for the seed of Christ to germinate in the atmosphere of the earth to birth as many children as God can birth. So the strongholds that are at war with the church, it's not that Jesus has been weak. It's just that we've had too much mixture. You know, you can take Clorox and you can mix it with a whole gallon of water till it loses its ability, but it still smells like Clorox. Looks like Clorox. The church has had the form but no power. So we've had no effect on the enemy. But if I'm reading the scriptures right, the Bible said that we are going to break the head of the enemy. Now, that doesn't sound like to me that the devil's going to get off scot-free. Anything that has the potential of prophetic fulfillment is going to be attacked. My wife and I talk about it. It's funny, and most of you probably say the same thing, but, you know, you meet some people, it just seems like everything came easy for them. Nothing has ever came easy for us. You just kept working at it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because you believe. But the enemy, listen, it should be an encouragement to you. The more the devil comes after you, the more he's afraid of you. Yeah. Hallelujah. He is terror. He's in terror of people of God that have the potential of God in them. And there had to be an absolute terrorizing spirit that hit the enemy the day that a green sprout began to come up out, hallelujah, where Jesus was buried. And see, you can plant a seed, it'll produce a tree. <clears throat> but the tree will produce a multiplicity of seed. And you need to plant it again, and it happens all over. Bible says, before the Lord comes back, as the waters cover the sea, so shall the knowledge of the glory of the Lord cover the earth. This is something that God's begin to talk to me about. To ask for wisdom. We need wisdom. That's all through the scriptures. It's in the Old Testament. It's in the New Testament. It's get wisdom. Ask for wisdom. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who upbraideth not, but giveth to every man liberally. And I begin to ask God, Lord, give me wisdom to lead this church. Give us wisdom on how to pursue a building. Give us divine strategy. Hallelujah. How to circumvent the plans of the enemy. Fill us. <clears throat> 
And it's the same thing with preaching. I told the Holy Ghost, I said, you wrote the book. <laughs> then the Bible said that men of old were moved on by the Holy Ghost. And they wrote what the Holy Ghost told them to write. So I've been telling the Holy Ghost. I said, you wrote it, so show me its secrets. Give me revelation. Let me find the depth that's underneath the chapters in there. People say, Brother Kim, where'd you get that? I, I can't explain it. It just comes from the Lord. And it's just a Holy Ghost inspiration. Ask God for insight into the word of the Lord. Now, ask God for wisdom. Hallelujah. Hear me by the Spirit. They'll say it the Lord. I need businessmen that I am going to entrust with wealth. I am going to release, say it the Lord, some new ideas, uh, some new concepts, uh, some new inventions, uh, but I cannot give it to men and women uh, who will falter and fail uh, under the weight uh, of the blessing of the Lord. Uh, so I am watching. I am going to and fro uh, throughout the earth, uh, and I am looking for men and women uh, that I can trust uh, because out of the womb of heaven, saith God, uh, I am going to release to you things uh, that will change the world. There is a divine intervening of the Spirit of the Lord. May the Holy Ghost get a hold of you by the Spirit of God. And out of your belly will begin to flow the utterance of the Lord. One of the reasons I'm encouraged is because we look at all the stuff that's going on in the earth. And we're thinking in terms, how are we going to defeat this? We're not. It's not our problem. The Lord said, at harvest time, I'm going to send angels from heaven into the earth. And they are going to physically begin to remove men and women that are tares, that are hypocrites, that are counterfeit. And what we're seeing right now, what we're in the midst of, God is making people reveal their hearts. It's coming. And it's, I'm telling you that there is, God is going to, he's already begun it, but there is a removal of old wineskins in the house of the Lord because you can't have an old voice that's out of touch and a fresh voice that's speaking a new thing by the Spirit of the Lord. And what we're seeing, this is going to be in an astounding year. It's going to be a year of alignment for the kingdom of the Lord. We're going to see God begin to remove people. I think that, um, you know, even right now, Jason told me a few other people, a dog sent me something on the bounty hunter, but there are people dropping dead all over the world at an unprecedented rate, and nobody can understand why. We're talking about 20-year-olds, 25-year-olds, 40-year-olds. They're just up and dying, and nobody knows why. Well, God is beginning to release something <clears throat> in the earth. And part of it is he's removing the tares from the body of Christ. We do not have time, once we get in the full move of the Lord, to have to deal with a bunch of Jezebel spirits that come into this house and trying to cause division. And so the Lord, hallelujah, is releasing a divine protection. I don't want to have to deal every Sunday with all kinds of nonsense. We are a holy house full of the power of God, our own only agenda is to heal the sick, raise the dead, birth new life, loose the power of God in the atmosphere, set the captives free, heal the broken heart, bring the gospel to the poor, and lift up the name of Jesus. Now over you today, hallelujah, I release a resurrection anointing. I'm calling you out of where the enemy 
thought he planted you uh, and buried you. Uh, and I'm calling a resurrection anointing over your ministry, uh, over your gifts, uh, over your finances, uh, over your revelation. Uh, I bind the spirit of death in this house. Uh, and I declare uh, that we are going to break the head of the enemy uh, once and for all. Uh, and that the church, uh, the church uh, is going to rise up by the power of God. It flourishes. The Lord says there will never be another plague. Hallelujah. God, God says I'm fixing to show a difference. And then God said the first three plagues that Moses and Aaron did in Egypt, the magicians were able to duplicate. And from that moment on, the Lord says they could not duplicate what I released in the earth. <clears throat> God says the church has have stepped over into another dimension. And the enemy and the lukewarm and the counterfeit will not be able to duplicate what the church is beginning to step into by the power of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. No longer. No longer are we going to go backwards, says the Lord. God says, I am increasing the momentum of my people. And the Lord says, the church is going to break the head of Satan for a season. And in that season... There is going to be harvests that will come forth at an unprecedented level by the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 There are, the Lord says, I have already opened up. I'm just telling you what I'm hearing by the Spirit. The Lord says, I've already opened up the storehouses of heaven. That have set untouched for millenniums. And God said, the door is now open. Just as I opened the door for Noah's ark for a week, so have I opened the storehouses, saith the Lord, in the heavens. And I'm giving you access, says God, to begin to walk in to the storehouses of heaven. God said that your entrance will be your faithfulness that you have had and your giving and your tithing, says the Lord, or have qualified you to go in and take what you want. God said this is not just spiritual things, but this is natural things, saith the Lord. I'm going to give you the desires of your heart, saith God, and I'm going to bless you until your cup runs over and your brother has to come and help you handle what I am doing by the Spirit of the Lord. <clears throat> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God said, I am knitting the nations to the heart of this church. I am knitting the heart of the nations to this church, saith the Lord. And as you begin to advance the kingdom of the Lord, not only are they coming physically, saith God, but around the world there are resources beginning to come in to this sanctuary by the Spirit of God. I have raised you up, saith the Lord, as an example and a prototype. You are not the last, but you are the beginning of what I am doing in this hour, saith God. I have raised you up for this hour to go after the strongholds of hell. Even as I gave you boldness on your leader, so now do I release boldness in this house upon you for the spirit of intimidation and the spirit of fear that has wrestled with you until it drove faith out of you. Today, I, thy God, say to thee, I break that demonic stronghold in the name of 
of the Lord, and I begin to loose boldness upon you. Declare it, say it, God. Be not intimidated. Charge the gates of hell and watch me, say it, the Lord. Even as I send an angel into the land of Canaan to go before the Israelite, so am I sending the army of angels, say it, God, into the nations and into your nation, say it, the Lord, that are going to go before you. They will fight your battles for the day of weariness and the day of heaviness is over. For he that goeth forth bearing precious seed now shall doubtless come again, not weeping, but rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. I have waited for this hour, saith God. I have held myself back. But today, saith the Lord, I open the windows of heaven upon thee and I release the glory, the glory, the glory of God. Now may there be a manifested presence of the Lord that begins to settle down in this sanctuary and change you by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 